Hello and welcome to lesson three in this last week of term. Remember striving for five, writing everything down on paper. Green pen for ticking or fixing. And the two drop-ins today and tomorrow. So the knowledge check as usual. Um, there are three chilies. You don't have to do the chilies if you don't want to. You can make a choice that this top left box is really important um, as is this box down here we will go into this in a little bit more detail but this box and this box are really important um, this box is all about recapping about ratio and then we've got two multiplication questions you can do either question you don't have to do both should take you about five or six minutes pause the video and give it a really good go if you haven't paused the video yet, answers are coming up. Green pens at the ready in three, two, one. Green pens to tick or fix. So for all of these, you had to divide by itself. Remember, a fraction means divide. You had to work out the calculation and then write it. If you wrote two times eight divided by two times eight, that's fine. You can tick that as well but please write in 16. I should have specified that. So if you've got that, you can tick it, but you need to write this one in as well. And same for all of these. If you've just divided by eight squared, you're not wrong, but write in 64 as well. Same for these two. <clears throat> so on the right over here, I haven't done the calculation. Um, hopefully you either use lattice or multiply by 100 and then divided by 100 to give you if you did 971 times 35 and then got your answer divided by 100, that would also have given you that. That's one other way you could have completed it. Um, here's the lattice method. Don't forget about carrying. And this is all about um, finding highest common factors. So finding the same times table that both numbers are in. And this chili here, all you had to do was simplify the fraction part so the whole number stays the same. Pause the video now if you want to make any notes to tick or fix. So just to clarify, we're going to go over simplifying fractions just a little bit. So both in the five times table, divide numerator and denominator by five to give you five over 11. <coughs> Excuse me. It is the same skill for simplifying ratios. Fractions show parts out of a whole. Ratio show group to group, which give you the whole as well. <clears throat> Same skill. What time say they're both in? Divide them both by five. Exactly the same skill. The only difference is, is look how the fraction is written. Fraction question, fraction answer. Ratio question, ratio answer. Pause or rewind if you need to. Sometimes you might have to simplify in a couple of steps. What do they both end in? So what will you be dividing them both by? I hope you said 10. So divide them both by 10. And then you do it again. Both in the three times table. Good. Divide them both by three. Get your final answer. Remember, if it doesn't say write as a mixed fraction, leave it as an improper fraction. Can't divide any more, so we are done. Exactly the same steps. Again, what time say were they both in and how do you know? They end in a zero, so you divide them both by 10. What time's table are 24 and 36 in? Now there are a few ways you could do this. They're both in the twos, they're both in the threes, they're both in the sixes, they're both in the 12. So you could keep on dividing until you can't go any further, but I'm just gonna divide them both by 12 because it's the highest common factor. 12 is the highest common factor. So if you divide by the highest common factor that you know, it will make your steps shorter so you have less steps. So in this case, the highest common factor is 12. 
give you 2 over 3. If you did it in lots of little steps, say you divided by 3, or, yeah, so if we divide by 3 and divide by 3, you would get 8 dot dot 12. And then what time table are they in? You could divide that by 2 to give you 4, 6, and then you can divide by 2 again if you need to. So again, if you look here, we have got the exact same answer, but look how many steps we used when we don't use the highest common factor. Pause or rewind if you need to. Okay, so quick two minutes, 10 quick questions. You are writing the factor pairs. Pause the video and give it a really good go. Two minutes, off you go. If you haven't paused the video and done your 10 quick questions, answers are coming up in three, green pens at the ready, two, one. Answers are on the screen now. Doesn't matter which order you've written them in, I've written them in factor pairs. You may have just written them out in a different order, but remember factor pairs are useful because it means that you don't miss any out. And if you notice, um, 25 is a square number, it only has three. 16 is a square number, it has five. So square numbers have an odd number of factors. That's something we've spoken about before. If you remembered that, really well done. So simplifying ratios and fractions is the same. And when you simplify, you're trying to write it with the smallest factor you can as the smallest factor. And you use that, you use the highest common factor to help you do that. So here are the three steps to find the highest common factor in case you need a quick revision. Write the factors which you've just practiced, find the same factors, and then write out the highest. If you struggle and it feels like it's too much, you can do one and two, but you will have the repeated steps that I showed you on the first I do. Pause the video now if you'd like to take any notes or rewind the video back to have a look at what I was talking about here. So simplifying ratios, exactly like we did on the ID. Pause the video to copy down the question. What times table are 28 and 36 both in? One, two, that's in three, but 28 isn't. They're both in four. That's in six, that isn't. That's in seven, that isn't. Nine, neither in eight, neither, oh, that's in nine, that isn't. And neither of them are in the tens. So there are factors. So our highest common factor, and I've ignored one because if you divide by one, it'd be the same. So we've got two and four. What is the highest common factor? Well, I haven't used highest common factor. I've used two because it's easiest. So dividing them both by two. Again, what is the highest common factor between those two? Two. So we divide by two again. And we get our final answer. We can't divide any more because the highest common factor they're both in is one. So this is using two times tables because dividing by two is something that a lot of you've been doing for a long time. However, if we divided by four, which is the highest common factor, I apologize for that earlier, I forgot which order I did it in. So this question uses the highest common factor. We can do it in one step. So highest common factor is more efficient but if you can just do it by factors, you'll still get the same answer. It would just take you a few more steps. Pause the video to make any notes. Okay, you've got eight questions to do and two chilies. 
I think this will take you about four minutes. For the first couple of questions, hopefully your time save your knowledge of 10 and five times tables is good. So these three shouldn't take you very long. So give yourselves four to five minutes to simplify the ratios. I expect you to show your working. Original ratio, what you divided them both by. Yes, I want you to write it twice. And the final answer. The reason why you're writing it twice is to remind you you are dividing both by the same number. Pause the video and give this a really good go. If you haven't paused the video, answers are coming up in three, two, one, equal fix. So I have done these in two steps because I'm sure not a lot of you know your 16 times table but hopefully you recognize it's in eight and two. You might have done it the other way around and then divided by two and then divided by eight. All I'm really interested in is not all the steps, but just the first ratio and the last one in this instance. Doesn't matter how many steps you've got to get there. If you had a go at any of the chilies, please let us know in the comments. And that is the password for today, 73. Not seven dot dot three, just 73. I'm just going to write that down underneath. 73. Okay. Now, this is a very specific form of simplifying. It's giving you what number one of the groups has to be. Track the left hand side of the screen first. Step one, write them on top of each other. Which group is represented in both questions? That's right, the four in the first one and one in the second. So that tells us our divisor. When we did equivalent ratios before, we had a multiplier. This time the number is getting smaller. So we are using a divider, a divisor. How do we get from four to one? Divide by four. So what do we have to do to 36? Divide it by four, which gives us nine. So four to 36 equals one to nine. And as you can see from the question, the one is in the same place as the four. The one is in the same place as the four. That's very, very important. All right, track the right hand side. You should see something already between the four and the 35. Same first step, but the problem here is 35 is not in the four times table. What do we do? We still have to divide by four. We still have to divide by four, but how can we rewrite this? What's another way to write a division? That's right, as a fraction. If you can't divide it, you just write it as a fraction. That's it. And that's the final answer. Again, remember the one has been simplified from the four, so keep the one in the correct place. Okay, we do, and the question. Pause the video to write that out. Okay, first step, we write them one on top of the other, leaving space in between to do some working out. Which I'm gonna do these three steps first. So these are your first two steps. So drawing out the ratios, one under the other, and then drawing in the arrow. Now in this question, the one is the second group, which is underneath the nine. How do we get from nine to one? Divide by nine. This is the why the first box on the knowledge check was so important because this is the whole point. For unit ratios, you have to know to divide by itself. What do we have to do to 54? What do we divide it by? That's right, nine, exactly the same. Is 54 in the nine times table? Yes. Again, this is why your time tables are so important. And there you have it, 54 to nine, as a unit ratio. Remember, unit means one. It means it has to have one in the answer. 
write down uh, the we do too, please. You should see a problem here. Is 54 in the 11 times table? What do you predict the answer is going to be then? Is it going to be an integer? Yes or no? Have a little think. Okay, step one and two. What are we dividing by? That's right, we're dividing by 11. What are we dividing 54 by? That's right, 11. Not in the, 54 is not in the 11 times table, so we leave it as a fraction. Pause the video to make some notes. Remember, if it's not an integer, leave it as a fraction. It will challenge here. I'm going to click through this one. Let's do steps. You got it exactly the same. Now, 14 is not in the four times table. However, what times table are they both in? That's right, they're both in the two times table. So we can simplify the fraction. You can simplify the fraction. This is a challenge. Don't expect everyone to get this. If you want to make some notes, you can on that question. All right, my lovelies, this is the last exercise of the day. There's only four questions to do. And I think this will only take you a couple of minutes, two to three minutes. And there's two chilies here, which involve simplifying fractions as well. So give yourself two to three minutes or just have a go at the chilies if you want to. If you haven't paused the video, answers are in three, two, one. Green pens, tick or fix. All right, lovelies. Last slide, which is the note section. So remember, unit means one. A unit ratio must have a group with one equal part. There's your one equal part. And these are the two formats that we've done today. However, you could write a decimal answer. And this is something that we will build on in, in class when we have um, calculators and when we do some more um, fraction to decimal conversions. And remember, the one can be on either side. Oops, sorry. So if you want to pause the video here and make any notes, you can. Just a quick reminder, the password is 73. 73. As usual, optional work is there if you want to do any revision. Have a lovely day.